Life turning pages, night turning day. I'm tired of waiting. I gotta make it. And you gotta address the Ed Davis situation now because <laughs> Ed Davis, he helped out so much in the first half of the year with being a good leader, good vet. But in the second half of the year, he just we needed a backup center, and they couldn't even play him because he's just, you know, he don't, he was, he's not there to play. He was there to, I think, add experience and stuff like that. And now that we have that experience, I'm sure there should be some job that opens up where they could sign him to, I don't know, a big man coach of some sort. I don't know, but that was just a roster spot that really went to waste. Um, so they'll, uh, they'll address that. You've, so there's already a roster spot that you've got to address. But with JB, to answer that question, um, I don't necessarily have a problem with JB's um, rotation other than the fact that Lamar Stevens was not <laughs> given minutes, I think, in that. Because he could have been the dude that went on to Trey Young. Like, Lamar Stevens, in my opinion, is probably better than Isaac Okoro at this moment. I don't know if that's a big call. But Isaac Okoro got a whole lot more minutes than what Lamar Stevens did. And I'm seeing Lamar Stevens have way better games this year than Isaac Okoro has ever had in his two-year career. And people might say, well, he's so young, but he, he was a pick five. Like, he's got to be better. Isaac Okoro just don't rate a whole lot at the moment. And I'm, I really am keen to see what his position is going to be in the team next year. Because right now, he's consistently starting getting 30 minutes a game. But I don't know if he, he deserves that. <laughs> that's a bold well it's, it's not a bold take but it is a bold take mm. I do think it, I, I agree with you 100% I do think the uh, Lamar Stevens he's developed really nicely this season yeah. so I do expect him to get more minutes he is the small forward we've all been saying we need he got the right size he slashes at a basket he's strong he could actually guard some uh some wings he got the built for it um uh He's learning, but uh, in terms of ISO, even though we are playing on big minutes, what I fear is that we're playing them wrong in certain instances because I've said, let's let's take the Brooklyn game, right? <laughs> For since we drafted him, I said Isaac. I just do not. I do not think that Isaac Okoro can guard small forward. elite level small forwards, right? Who's yeah. like. Kevin Durant, LeBron's. Yet we kept having him switch on players like KD, and he cooked us. He cooked us, right? But the person he really should have been rotating on, who I think he could have actually made an impact on, which we've seen him make an impact on, is if we switch him on players like Kyrie, right? Because he got the size, he got the the height to guard players like him or smaller wings. So like a Zach Levine, those, those type of wings, right? Yeah. Not traditional, you know, and I, I, I fear that JB might be – I think this is where we send the unexperienced of his rotation. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, offensively, Isaac Okoro has to improve. I think that is where we will always miss out. But if we're talking about um, what his rotation – what he's going to be in the rotation next season, assuming we extend Karis LeVert, we extend Colin Sexton, we give Darius Garland extension, and yep. let's say – hypothetically, we do sign back Rubio, right? Um, obviously, Isaac Okoro is going to come off the bench, and he's probably going to be the second unit two guard. And mm. you know, he's probably going to get, what, 15, 20 minutes. He's going to be a, he's he's going to get minutes, but his role is, like, his role really is not to, to initiate offense. It's really to probably come off with Karis Avert and just play really good defensive minutes. Yeah. Maybe kick a shoot. So, I can I can see where you're coming from from that, but uh, I would have I would have to ask you because I feel I was in a Twitter chat too and they was talking about this too. Do you think this off season, you know, Bo take please don't kill me down in the comments. Do you think we should get in a situation where we may consider trading Isaac Okoro? Oh. <laughs> You know what I was thinking the other day? This actually, this is pretty unrelated to your topic. But I was thinking the other day, someone was talking about Zion Williams and trades and stuff like that. And it got me thinking, yeah. hold on a second. What would a team look like of Zion, <laughs> Evan Mobley, and Jarrett Allen all together? 
Like, defensively, it would be cracked. Yeah. But offensively, it'd be a... And this is like, Isaac Okoro would probably get traded into something like that. If you get Zion, you would have to have a fast-paced offense. You would have to let them run up and like you would you would have to almost have that Los Angeles Lakers offense when they had Lonzo and Ingram and Kuzma when it was just ball in up and down. Yeah. Like and, like you cannot let a defense get uh situated in the half court. It like you couldn't. That would be crazy. I think that would <laughs> it, it, it's never it, gonna it, happen, it, but it would be funny to see. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. For sure. Um, but yeah, when it comes to Isaac Okoro, should we trade him? Yeah. Wow, that's a it is a big question. I'd say no because I really don't know who we get. Um, there's not like I feel like there's not anywhere near as many stars that are available as there have been in previous years. Like it seems like every guy has found a team. Like if there was what's Paul George thirty or thirty one. If we if Paul George was like twenty seven years old looking for a new team, right? Like that type of player who's a six foot seven, six foot eight, small forward shooting guard, that's a star that was available, then you would hundred percent throw a big offer. But there's like no one that fit that criteria, you know, for um Isaac Okoro. One could be Bradley Beal, but I just I don't know if there's really too much of a and the same with Donovan Mitchell. Both of those guys could be on the move. Is there too much of a... Like, what, what would the point be of replacing Colin Sexton with those two guys? Like, how much how much more would you get out of it, you know? You'd have to trade up so much to get those guys. Oh, I don't know. And hey, you know I what's really crazy, too? I would... I think if we were to trade for one of the two, realistically, I think it would be Bill. I th- I think that would be the most likely to, to go our way with, without getting completely heist. But yeah. um, unfortunately, and I've been thinking about it ever since I made a poll about, like, who do you think we should trade for and such, if we were to make a trade hypothetically. Um, when I picked Bradley Bill, I thought about it. Cause somebody, and somebody said it down in my comments, and I'm going to have it somewhere in this video. But, he like, he said, he was like, why would we trade for Bradley Bill if we technically have a player like that in Colin Sexton that could very well be a Bradley Bill, potentially, in terms of what, what Bradley Bill brings to his team, yeah, right? Yeah. And when he said that, you know, I, re- I really thought about it. I really sat there, you know, I'm like, I'm at first I'm, I was taking it kind of disrespectful to Bradley Bill because I'm like, Bradley Bill is a phenomenal scorer. But then I thought about, like, when Bradley Bill really became – uh, Bradley Bill, like it was four or five years down, you know, and then he really got the blown off. But then I started thinking about it, like, what did he do with that, right? And I'm mm-hmm. thinking of Colin. I'm like, Colin really could, like, cause he the same height, you know, his weight might, you know, be give or take. Colin might oh, be. I think he's a couple of inches shorter than Bill. Is Bill supposed to be six three? But are we believing yeah. that? Do you reckon he is six three? I think he's. He might be six three, six four. You know, yeah, I think Sexton's he, what six one. Yeah. But, Cop, yeah. Actually, let me hold on. Let me fact Because I think it. their heights are a little bit different. I'd say Beal is better defensively, but that's probably just because he's a little taller, a little bit longer. You know, like he can, he can cover that. But I get what you're saying, man. Donovan Mitchell, Donovan Mitchell would be the other one. Like him and Sexton are the same height, six one. What have they got Sexton listed at? They got Colin Sexton six one. Okay, cool. I got that one, and I'm gonna say yeah, Bill six yeah. three. But look, Donovan Mitchell and Sexton—they're the same height. They're both guys that are big, six, big, four. big shot creators. Six four. Damn, he's taller than I thought. <laughs> and oh yeah, and Bradley Bill seventeen pounds more than him too. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. So yeah, it's. It's something you look at, though. You, you what I was saying, Donovan Mitchell. He's the same height as Sexton, both really, really big shot creators. Why Why couldn't Sexton eventually maybe... Def- if he got his, like... If he got his shots right, like, he started to learn what shots to take and what shots to not take and got his three-point percentage up, Sexton could very well average 23 or something a game next season. Yeah. But how much is Sexton worth? Because we know he's a... 
his passing and ball movement is right now not very, very good. Probably one of the worst out of any NBA players, I reckon. We know how de- how definitely he can like really hurt an offense. Like we saw at the start of the year, Cavaliers were statistically a lot better with Sexton off the court than when they you know actually had him on there. So how much does he affect the ball movement? That's the question I've got. He could, if I'm being real with you, he could affect it a lot. But if if Cleveland is counting our stars, we could assume that Colin Sexton all year he probably seen how this how what this offense was, and he probably he himself he probably took a a, a back seat and was like, damn, this team is playing significantly better because he had to realize it too. This team is playing significantly better without me on the floor. And they was one, literally one game, one strong quarter away from being in the playoffs without me, right? So I could say Colin Sexton might look at that and say, I'm about to change my – yeah, yeah. he's still going to be a one-on-one player. Don't get me wrong. He's he not going to change that greatly, but he be he might be a little bit – he might be more prone to, like, do the extra pass, which we've been hoping for for Colin. Mm. And he's young, too. So he has that time to do it. Yeah. Um, but if we if we be in double advocate, I'm saying all right, Colin Sexton, we assume Colin Sexton did not learn anything from that season, and he's not changing his game completely. He's gonna be a high volume scorer, but he's gonna he's gonna do the same passing we've seen for the past three years. I think he would be a detriment to the team. Mm. Um, the and the problem too because uh because it's crazy because we need like it's times where we do need his scoring production. But what we also seen for a team, um, we also need players that's gonna that's willing to do the extra pass because had we not had this type of offense, we probably would not have seen. Oh shoot! Oops. <laughs> <My bad. laughs> That's that lineage with that money. That money.